What were the facts you learned in school that are no longer true? Story 1. I didn't learn this in school, but I heard it often repeated on things like the Discovery Channel and Animal Planet when I was a kid. I always heard that the Komodo dragon, the largest living lizard on Earth, was such a successful predator because its mouth was so filthy and septic that the microbes in the saliva would cause fatal infections on its prey. The dragon would track the wounded animal until it eventually collapsed and would eat it. This, as it turns out, is not true, or at the very least, not the whole story. It takes days for microbial infections to begin to show symptoms in an animal as large as, say, a water buffalo, but animals were collapsing hours after being bitten, not days. Microbial infections from their saliva couldn't explain how rapidly these large mammals were being unalived. This lie was repeated throughout my childhood, and I even heard it repeated at the San Diego Zoo as recently as last year. As it turns out, Komodo dragons are able to hunt so successfully because their saliva contains venom that they produce from their venom glands. I thought that until this very moment. I never felt so betrayed as when I learned it. Apparently, they didn't even know about the venom glands until 2009, with some evidence of venomous proteins going back to 2005. Zoologists were pretty surprised to learn this too, for decades, conventional wisdom was that there were only two species of venomous lizards, the Gila monster and beaded lizard. Then they started looking for venom proteins in saliva. Turns out, instead of two venomous lizards, it's actually more like 1,300. Also, almost all snakes have venom. It's actually kind of interesting to see that some people are starting to figure out the truth. I don't know if uh, the Discovery Channel should be faulted for repeating this information back when they did. They didn't know any better. But that's kind of what's true of anything that's true. Science marches on, and when you learn new facts, things change to fit what the facts say. Story 2. You have to learn cursive writing. Higher schooling will not accept anything that isn't cursive. Yes, I remember teachers writing students in handwriting. Teachers would write the alphabet in cursive, and students would do it in print. This was the only argument they used as to why cursive was better. Then high school came, and no one wrote in cursive, and everything we handed in had to be typed. Joke's on them. I combine cursive and print when I write. Sometimes I can't even read what I wrote. And here I am grading papers that are barely legible because of poor handwriting. Forget cursive. Teach kids some freaking penmanship for crying out loud. Just needed to vent. Edit. Just to add, this is at the college level, USA. Edit 2. Okay, I know most of you type lab reports, and I agree with you. However, these are not reports in the sense of writing your procedure out, etc., these reports fill in the blanks, like this example here. Edit 3. I was definitely not expecting this to blow up like this, so I should clarify a few things. I'm a TA for a 100-level engineering class. These labs are completely ridiculous. Unfortunately, I have no control over that. And after reading a lot of what you all have said, pen and paper have somewhat lost its place now that everything is going digital. I would argue that good penmanship is still needed in certain jobs, and it simply makes life a little easier for those who have to read it. With that said, my signatures still look like chicken scratch, and no two signatures are ever the same. Well, I don't think we're talking about signatures aside from just writing. Signatures are kind of meant to be kind of messy. That's something that we quickly have to identify ourselves with all the time. As far as typing, I took typing in high school, and... I definitely needed that compared with all the work I do with computers now. I don't know if handwriting is still as important as it is back then, but at least just be neat when filling stuff out. Story 3. There are five senses. I'm actually getting my PhD in neural engineering, and it blew my mind when I started learning all the other ones. Now, it totally bugs me that we were ever taught it. Strictly speaking, there are Dozens of senses, dozens, which lead to multiple perceptions of being. 
I think the general subject is quite complicated, though, and probably prudent to hold off trying to distinguish the two to children. Edit. I can't believe how much this has blown up. The biggest reason I love this community is for its curiosity. Seriously, stop apologizing for asking questions. Instead, be proud of your questions. As a scientist, I am 100% dedicated to the pursuit of knowledge, so you don't need to apologize for stupid questions before you ask. There's no such thing. Could you try to list them, from most important to least preferably? Not the original person. I don't think there is much agreement on exactly how many senses there are, but some of the most commonly agreed upon ones that I've heard of, a sense of temperature, sense of bodily orientation, sense of pressure, sense of thirst and hunger, sense of balance and acceleration, sense of pain, etc. Edit. To the people trying to poke holes in this and saying that this is just touch over and over again, I don't know, dude, just parroting stuff I read. Edit 2. Hey, just a heads up, if you're thinking of posting that these are just a subset of touch and don't deserve to be their own senses, about 50 people beat you to the punch. Take is no longer hot. Edit 3. Grammatical errors are intentional. Don't worry about it. I was looking at that list and... I was kind of wondering if all of those were part of touch, too. I don't know about sense of pain, though. That doesn't exactly happen with just on the surface. There could be pain inside of you as well. What do you think of those? Story 4. That fat is the biggest cause of heart disease. Sugar companies paid off scientists to focus the blame off sugar and push it onto fat. Edit. I'm not saying go out and eat bacon, sausage, and steak for every meal. I'm not saying you can never eat sugar. I'm just saying we used to demonize all fats saying they lead to heart disease when we know now there are good heart healthy fats. We also went through a period where reduced fat foods were considered healthier even though they had extra sugar to compensate for the lack of taste. I'm not your dietitian nor your cardiologist. I'm just noting that there seems to be a shift in the tide on our views of sugars and fats. All right, I remember that. We were always cooking things on pig fat then they came with animal fat is unhealthy. We half ignored that as a family. Some years later, actually vegetable oil is worse than pig fat. Basically, the exact concept behind all low-fat or zero-fat foods that are all over the place. People are slowly starting to realize that fat isn't bad for you, but rather sugar is the main issue. The problem is actually the other way around. Low-fat products are a problem because they would taste like trash if the lack of fat wasn't often compensated by tons of sugar. Story 5. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Nope. Just a slogan paid for by Kellogg's. Edit. To be clear, I don't think you should skip breakfast or that breakfast is unimportant. To think that would be just stupid. However, it should be known that this was a paid slogan to sell breakfast foods not based on any facts at the time. It's probably best to eat six to eight small meals of a variety of types and sources, none of them being particularly important, but important as a whole. What? Also, John Harvey Kellogg invented cornflakes because he believed that eating bland food would stop people from self-stimulating. And now frosted flakes are a thing. Take that, you self-flagellating Calvinistic jerk. I finish uncontrollably after eating a hearty bowl of Frosted Flakes and seven other breakfast foods all by myself. They're more than good. They're great. Edit. Wow. Uh, who would have thought it'd be about spunk at the breakfast table? Maybe now my dad can be proud of me, but I wouldn't count on it. Trust me, you don't want to get your hopes up of him getting his hopes up about me. I know from experience. Anyway... Don't fail your finals or life in general. Have a nice day. Story 6. That two blue-eyed patients can't have a brown-eyed child. Apparently, not only is this pure hogwash, the genetics of eye color is more complex than that. It led to a lot of kids being rejected by their real fathers before DNA testing became available. My son was taught that you have to have the same blood type as one of your parents. He told his teacher that his dad is O positive, I'm A positive, and yet he's O negative. And the teacher gave him a funny look and told him that maybe we should have a talk. He came home in a panic and asked if he was the result of an affair. I was so ticked. Of course I had to be sarcastic about it. You figured it out. 
Dad cheated on me and got pregnant, which is the only way this could happen because you look just freaking like him. He calmed down, did a bit of research, then apologized. Sounds to me like his teacher is the one who owed you an apology. Teachers deserve a hell of a lot of latitude when it comes to matching up their education with what parents want. But insinuating that a kid might be the result of extramarital activities is pretty awfully inappropriate. Hell, I hope you had a talk with that teacher. How much you want to bet that this teacher wasn't even the biology teacher? Maybe they were the English teacher or the math teacher. Maybe they were the coach. What do you think? Story 7. Most Tyrannosaurus were completely feathered and their posture was really long and sprinty. At least that's what we can believe now after more study. At the time, I believed that they were upright iguanas with big teeth. Edit. I don't want to reply to all 70 or so of you. I said Tyrannosaurus, but T-Rex was the obvious notable exception. There were other Tyrannosaurus besides Rex. And we can believe the giant chicken theory right up until someone discovers more evidence that shows they were actually covered in razor wire and had biomechanical implants. They were actually covered in razor wire and had biomechanical implants, just the ones we'll dig up after World War IV. I know not with what weapons World War III will be fought with, but World War IV will be fought with razor wire dinosaurs with biomechanical implants. Einstein. Story 8. There's a bunch of stuff we learned, UK, in schools that science has since moved on from. A brontosaurus is no longer a thing, now called a patasaurus. Britain no longer has a desert. Was Dungeness, since reclassified. Panda bears were declassified as bears and are now reclassified as bears. Even the way dinosaurs are depicted has changed. Look at velociraptors in Jurassic Park to now. Now they have feathers. Actually, the brontosaurus is back. New discoveries have led to paleontologists realizing that the brontosaurus is a separate species from the apatosaurus. Yay! Brontosaurus is my favorite! Edit. All the brontosaurus and dinosaur love. Yay! Story 9. A bit beside the point, but one teacher asked what color the hair of ice bears, polar bear, is. Everyone answered white, except for me, saying it was transparent. The teacher said that that was the stupidest thing she had ever heard and put that off. Not the first time I knew better and got shut off by some stupid teacher. Edit. To clear up some confusion going on here, I called it ice bear. The correct term is polar bear. Sorry that some of you have to get so mad for using the wrong term. Thanks, though, to all the people enjoying the word ice bear. Edit 2. A polar bear's coat has two layers of hair. An outer layer made up of long 5 to 15 centimeter guard hairs and a thick undercoat made up of shorter hair. These guard hairs are mostly transparent or clear, but thanks to some special characteristics that work to create cool optical tricks, these hairs appear white. Got to admit, I've never heard that one before. I know that stuff can look white that's transparent if they're exposed to direct sunlight and you hit it at a certain angle, so I can see how that makes sense. I'll have to look that one up a little bit further. That's pretty cool. Story 10. I was taught in grade school that we had to know the metric system because the United States was going to adopt it like any day now. For sure. That was about 30 years ago. The U.S. is moving towards the metric system. Inch by inch. I mean, the U.S. government passed the Metric Conversion Act in 1975 that officially made the metric system the preferred way to measure things. The change just hasn't been happening in everyday life. Look, if we adopted the metric system, when the temp hits 100 degrees, we would all expire. Our lakes would boil. Do you want that? Story 11. In psychology class, we learned about the bystander effect in the Kitty Genovese story, where apparently she was physically violated and unalived. She cried for help, but her neighbors in the building apparently assumed someone else was going to help her. Turns out the story was embellished by a reporter so that it sounded like no one did help her, but her neighbors actually helped, and she passed away on the way to the hospital. The bystander effect is still a thing, right? Only the example doesn't hold up. Actually, the story was embellished by the police, because several neighbors said they did call the police and no one responded. So the police defended themselves with an aggressive no-one-called-the-police media push which was picked up in a big way by the New York Times. 
But the good news is that the aggressive media coverage of this story and resulting public outrage helped lead to the establishment of the nationwide 911 emergency phone system. Story 12. Christopher Columbus was the first dude to discover America and tried to bargain with the natives, but couldn't work it out because of cultural differences. In grade school during the 70s, we were also taught that he sailed west to prove the world was round. We were taught that in the 2000s as well. What a load of trash. I have a graduate-level college textbook for teachers that also states the same thing. It was treated as fact. The book was published in 2015. Yep, those facts were drilled into my head as a kid. That and there were cartoons, Bugs Bunny cartoons growing up that kind of moved along those same kind of facts. Since then, people have been doing some research and come up with a lot of very yikes kind of truths that, uh, I don't know. If you're into looking those up, just be warned. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 13. That glass is a liquid. This is apparently not true, but I believed it for a long time because things that I learned as a child somehow stuck around as truths way more easily in my mind. Edit. Apparently, it's sort of true anyway. As I've understood, most consider glass to be somewhere between a solid and a liquid fluid. Amorphous solid is the term I learned today. It does not have the crystal structure of a solid, but when cooled down, it's practically a solid as it doesn't flow. The old windows that are thicker at the bottom are not caused by the flowing of glass, but it's simply the way they were produced that causes this. Today I learned. Another edit. Comments don't fully agree on all the details. It's an interesting subject. Most seem to assure me that it is solid. And yes, I do realize that any substance can be a liquid, solid, or gas, etc., depending on the temperature. Story 14. There is a country called Czechoslovakia. This will always remain stuck in my head till the day I expire, and yet so much of it is out of date. Edit. Yeah, I am aware that some of it is straight up wrong. They played a bit fast and loose to get the song to fit the tune. My point was more that a number of valid mentions it makes are out of date, and it misses a number of new countries. Also, it's a very catchy tune, so there's that. I don't even have to click that. I know that's Yakko Warner singing the country song. Yes, I remember this so vividly. Switzerland, Austria, Czechoslovakia, Italy, Turkey, and Greece. The memories. Story 15. You only lose two teaspoons of blood during a period. Bull scat. Yes, I was taught this in nursing school. Boy, was I surprised when I started using a menstrual cup. One of the reasons I started using a menstrual cup was because my doctor wouldn't believe me when I said I bled so much. I wanted to be able to quantify it. It turns out I was losing anywhere from 200 milliliters to 300 millimeters of blood per period. That's only counting cups I completely fill, not the partially filled ones or the overflow amount I lose directly into the toilet or leaked out onto the pad. Story 16. My early teachers always said that the pilgrims and the natives got along and had a happy Thanksgiving. All was joyous. But when I got to fourth grade, my teacher basically said, everything you know about Thanksgiving is a lie. And sadly, we learned the truth. At least you were taught that in grade four. My grade 10 Canadian history class still taught that when the settlers came, everything was joyous and the fur trade was a turn of the century operation took an Aboriginal Studies class in university, and I was in shock. One of my favorite high school teachers either couldn't at the time or failed to even address the real reason behind reserves. Story 17. I was taught our 16th president was Jefferson Davis and that it wasn't a civil war because civil war isn't between two separate countries. This was in grade 5 in Alabama. Edit. I believe it was the individual teacher who taught this, not the school system. However, the school and community did have a few traditions honoring the Confederacy. Examples include local hotels on Mobile Bay firing a Confederate cannon into the bay once a week for the fallen Union and Confederate soldiers who perished at the bay while dressed in gray and a handful of memorials. That doesn't make sense, much like Alabama. If Jefferson Davis was a president, he was the first president of the Confederacy, 
not the 17th president of the U.S. Make up your mind. It was either one country or two. Story 18. High school. No one will accept work cited from Google. College. No one will accept work cited from Wikipedia. Boss. I don't know, just Google, Wiki, or YouTube that stuff. Edit. All the people focusing on the citation aspect of this post, any boss that says, just Google that stuff, obviously is not looking for the cure to cancer. This post was about the legitimacy of the tools available to do research. Okay, citing Google is like citing a library. You might as well say that you got the information from Earth. At least cite the website that Google got you to. Story 19. When I was a kid, we were taught that penguins' feet didn't freeze because of their circulation. Turns out, they have antifreeze proteins in their blood that bind to ice crystals and stop them from growing, so their blood stays liquid well below zero degrees. Source? Worked at a university research center with a guy that did his PhD in antifreeze proteins. Edit. Proteins, not enzymes. Sorry, biochemistry. Does this mean I can put penguin blood in my car? Do it and tell us the results. Story 20. 1. Pluto is the ninth and last planet in the solar system. 2. The atom is indivisible. 3. I will be successful if I get an A in every class. They first split the atom in 1917. Apparently, my school only heard about it in 2004. Story 21. When I was in kindergarten, we sat in a circle, and one at a time we'd enter the circle and act like our favorite animal and the others had to guess what we were. My favorite animal was a cheetah, so I crawled swiftly across the floor. No one could guess it. So after a few minutes and repeated all four sprints, my teacher, who wasn't very nice to me, said, I noticed you're moving very fast. A leopard? To which I replied, No, a cheetah is the fastest. She insisted she was right and I was wrong and never corrected herself. Two years later, I had her as a teacher again, because we had a very large second grade class, and after some unrelated trouble, my parents confronted her with this story at a parent-teacher conference. She denied it and insisted, we agree on that. This taught me everything I'd ever need to know about facts and authority figures. Story 22. The Great Wall of China is the only man-made structure visible from space. But space is visible from the Great Wall of China. I never understood why people said this. It doesn't make any sense, because the wall is not wide, just long. Right, like if you could see the wall, you'd definitely be able to see highways and stuff. Maybe if you tried tasting something other than, and there's this word, I don't know what it is, asterisk, asterisk, n, asterisk, asterisk. Don't know what that word is, sounds very problematic, I'm not going to touch it. You'd have gotten better data. I see we found the guy who's still in school. Story 23. I don't know how common it is, but if the Earth were one centimeter closer to the sun, we would be burned. One centimeter further from the sun, we would be frozen thing. No, we wouldn't. The distance is changing all the time during a year. No one better jump then. Forget jumping. If you're a couple inches shorter or taller than your friend, at least one of you is doomed. Elliptical orbit? Interesting. Not sure if the flat earthers will agree, though. Story 24. The Food Pyramid. So I'm not supposed to eat 700,000 calories a day? Edit. Okay, guys, I meant kilocalories. I didn't even know that was a thing. Seriously, I can never wrap my head around that. 45 to 56 servings of bread a day? Pete's sake. What the hell kind of food pyramid did your classroom have? Story 25. I before E except after C. But I have weird beige neighbors. The full phrase is I before E except after C or when it sounds like A as in neighbor and way. But yeah, weird is weird. Forfeit the rule. Story 26. In Norway, we learned that the U.S. had 52 states because of a book printing error. There are 52 states when you include the jokers. Please tell me this was on purpose. In Norwegian, combination words like that are written without any spaces, so it might have been an honest mistake. Story 27. The rainforest, at current rate of consumption, will be gone by 1996. Edit. This was in my middle school books, and I was in middle school in 2003. This is not a political deity damn lefty and their scare tactic money-grabbing global warming hoo-ha statement. More of a 
Wish my middle school replaced their science books more than once per decade. Story 28. Negative Numbers For four years of elementary school, I'm told that you can't subtract 8 from 7, and so the problem is unsolvable. In fifth grade, the answer is suddenly negative 1. Why wait five years to reveal that? Can students under fifth grade not handle the concept of negative numbers? I hated math after that and wondered what else would just suddenly be changed on me. Story 29. My eighth grade biology teacher told us that only identical twins were possible and that there was no scientific possibility for identical triplets, quints, etc. Imagine my surprise many years later when I discovered this was a blatant lie. I'm still confused as to how she could have possibly believed that, but then I remember that was before the internet. Story 30. Polar bears stay warm because their fur is fiber optic and absorbs heat from the sun. So if enough polar bears stand next to each other, I'd finally have fast fiber internet? Five bear. Story 31. That there are only three states of matter. California, New York, and Texas? Edit. I'm an idiot. I misread what he said. Story 32. Pluto was a planet when I was in school. Of course, Jerry. It's a cold, cold celestial dwarf. Gotta mine that sweet, sweet plutonium. Drill, baby, drill. Story 33. You're not gonna have a calculator everywhere you go. And I hope the caption person uses the numerals when I say this next part. 80085. That, on the other hand, still holds good. 80085 will be 80085. Story 34. You're only allowed to use one source from the internet in your paper. The rest needs to come from books. And deity forbid someone else beat you to that book you need. You might not see it for two weeks. Story 35. That I will use all of my math knowledge in my job doing the calculation by hand and without a calculator. Mechanical engineer and found out they have programs to do the calculations for you so you can't spend all your time doing long division. Story 36. In third grade, I was taught that Antarctica was the second largest continent because it looked that way on a map. I honestly don't know if my teacher actually believed that or if she was just messing with us. Story 37. Drink eight glasses of water a day. Yeah, I remember this. Ever since I started drinking eight glasses of whiskey, instead, everything has been a lot better, really. Story 38. That lemmings don't actually follow each other robotically, even to the point they'll walk off cliffs to their expiration. This fact was actually staged for a Walt Disney documentary back in the 60s or so. Story 39. Human blood is blue until it's oxygenated. B.C. and A.D. are before Christ and after passing, and the years in between weren't recorded. Technically, these were never true, though. Story 40. You're born with a set number of brain cells, and that number can only diminish throughout your life. Anti-alcohol, I remember. Story 41. I'm still in school, so many things have already changed. Pluto used to be a planet, the food pyramid used to be valid, and you can't start a sentence with the word but. Story 42. You need to learn how to do long-form math. You won't have a calculator with you all the time, which I type into my little handheld supercomputer. Story 43. Columbus was a good person. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.